Hello, this is Daniel and I'm going electric for the average person. Thanks for coming along for the ride. Coming to you today from Monument Valley along the Arizona and Utah border. Let's see how hard or how easy it is to drive a Tesla Model Y through this part of the country. Welcome back. I'm in the middle of a 3,000 mile drive from San Francisco, California, down to Los Angeles, out to Dallas, Texas, and then up to Chicago, Illinois. And when I was in Flagstaff, Arizona the other night, I was taking a look at the map in my hotel, and I was like, wow, Monument Valley is just north of Flagstaff. Can I go there in my Model Y? So I was taking a look at the Tesla.com trip planner website, and then also taking a look at some of the data in the car itself. And Tesla basically wanted me to drive 100 million miles from Flagstaff up to Page near the Arizona-Utah border, then all the way to the Blanding Utah Supercharger, down into Monument Valley, back up to Blanding, out to Farmington in New Mexico, and then off to Santa Fe where I was going to be spending the following evening. And I was just thinking, you know, that is insane. It's like hours and hours of just driving out of the way just to get to superchargers. So I figured there had to be a better way. So I took a look at PlugShare, which has all of these great J1772 chargers listed all over the country. And I discovered that there were, in fact, a couple of them sprinkled around Monument Valley, one in Tuba City and then one up in Bluff. And if I could do those and charge just enough and maybe find some electricity in Monument Valley itself, where I decided to book a hotel, I could probably go this whole route without having to do any of the supercharger roundabouts up in Page and then up in Blanding. So I jumped in the car and decided to skip Tesla's wise but burdensome supercharger route. And instead, I decided to take the riskier but far shorter route. Before I show you how that went, I love it when viewers reach out and leave comments to my videos. If you've ever driven your EV or your Tesla through this route, leave a comment below and let us know what route you took and how that worked out for you. So let's jump in and take a look at the route. Instead of the longer 612 mile supercharger route from Flagstaff, Arizona to Farmington, New Mexico, the shorter route was 331 miles. Each route then would have another 211 miles from Farmington to Santa Fe added on at the end. So the shorter route worked out to being 78 miles from Flagstaff to Tuba City, 96 miles from Tuba City to Monument Valley, 48 miles from Monument Valley to Bluff, 49 miles from Bluff to Four Corners, and then finally 60 miles from Four Corners to Farmington. The PlugShare app showed that there were level two chargers located at the Moen Kopi Legacy Inn and Suites Hotel. Apologies for any mispronunciations. Now, there were two Tesla plugs listed and one J1772, so that's where I headed first. That morning was pretty cold, so my supercharger was on the slower side, but I did get the car up to 100%. I wanted every mile I could get out of that battery. Tesla's own mile estimate said 100% charge would get me about 297 miles range, but honestly, after driving my 2020 Model Y with 20-inch wheels 40,000 plus miles over the past 14 months, I know that my style of driving gets me something closer to around 244 miles of maximum range, which is 21% less than the Tesla estimate. But I also know if the weather is colder or that if headwinds are stronger than normal, I might get something even lower like 215 miles or 19 additional miles less than my regular real world mile numbers, which are also much less than Tesla's estimations. So I made sure to get on the road with 100% charge. Fortunately, when I got to Tuba City, the chargers were available and they worked. You just needed to go inside to the hotel, pay 10 bucks, plug in, and then charge the car. I stayed for about an hour and 45 minutes. I had lunch at the local Denny's and then I got back on the road. And the great news about the drive from Flagstaff to Tuba City is that there's a mountain just outside of Flagstaff and you get some really great regen coming down the backside. So my efficiency was only 223 watt hours per mile, which means my full range would theoretically be closer to 318 miles. So I started the charge at 73% and left at 95% and was getting really good range along that first bit. And the car was showing me with 95% from Tuba City, I could arrive in Monument Valley at 49% and also make it all the way up to Blanding, Utah with 19% in the battery. And that's great because there's not much electricity in between. 
The drive was easy and I did most of it on autopilot. I'll show a bunch of pictures and videos here as I talk about my next two electricity top-ups. Now, I love deserts, so I really enjoyed the trip up to Monument Valley. I kept my eye on my efficiency and because there were fewer mountains, I didn't get as much regen between Tuba City and Monument Valley as I got earlier in the morning, but it was all pretty decent regardless. I'm going to give you a range pro tip though for any of you recent Tesla owners or any of you thinking about buying a Tesla or any EV really. Tesla navigation appears to calculate its range and battery percentage estimates assuming that the weather is good and that you drive the exact posted speed limit. And the trip estimations are typically pretty accurate if both of those things are true. Since we can't control the weather, we can control our speed and driving style. So if you just drive in a relaxed manner and keep to the posted speed limit, you'll pretty much get the range that the car shows. But if you're ever in a pinch, here's the pro tip. Just drop it down five to 10 miles per hour under the posted speed limit, and you can actually get some really good extra range. Also, throughout my drive, I kept my eye on the energy trip tab, which is very helpful. Since I had plenty of time on this drive, I was bouncing between driving just at the speed limit to five to 10 miles per hour below the speed limit, and my arrival charge ended up being a good 18% better than estimated. Some people would never wanna drive slower than the speed limit, but when you're in the middle of nowhere, it can be extremely helpful if you do. I arrived at Monument Valley about an hour before sundown and took a wonderful guided tour through the park with a lovely local man from the Navajo Nation. I also learned as part of the tour that the preferred and correct name for the Navajo is Dene. So I would like to share my thanks to the Dene Nation for letting me enjoy the park. That night, I stayed at Golding Lodge, just a couple of miles from the entrance to the park, where PlugShare mentioned there was a regular 120 volt, quote unquote, wall plug. And this is the same slow type of plug that you're gonna have anywhere in your home. It was right outside my hotel room door and I was able to add 21% or 14 kilowatt hours of energy that night, which at my typical efficiency got me about 48 extra miles into the battery. And you can't shake a stick at that when you're in the middle of the desert. So I made it here to my final destination in Northern Illinois. And as you can tell, it's a little colder and a little snowier here than the Four Corners. After topping up in Monument Valley, the rest of the drive through Bluff to the Four Corners and then off to Farmington, and Santa Fe was pretty straightforward. Navigation said the route would be 151 miles and starting at 70% in the battery that I'd be able to arrive in Farmington with a 10% charge. That's a bit on the low side, but manageable, especially if I drove the speed limit. But since I wanted to add a detour to Four Corners, I decided to stop at the Twin Rocks Trading Post in Bluff, Utah at a level two J1772 charger for two hours. I was able to take a break, have a bite to eat, and add 12 kilowatt hours to my battery, which worked out to an extra 17% or another 40 miles. The Trading Post is a great stop, and while you're charging, you can also walk to the Bluff Fort Visitor Center just a couple blocks away. After Bluff, I swung by Four Corners, where New Mexico, Colorado, Utah, and Arizona come to a point, and then I made my way into Farmington and was back on the supercharger network. Word to the wise, though, the Farmington supercharger is both busy and really slow. I had to wait a good 20 minutes to get into the charger stall, and then it took me an hour and a half to add 83% to the battery, or stated otherwise, to get 59 kilowatt hours of energy or 200 miles. That worked out to an average charge speed of 49 kilowatts, which is very, very slow for a supercharger. So prepare to spend a lot of time here. I didn't mind spending all that time charging in Farmington. Sure, it would have been nice if it were faster, but Tesla Navigation was telling me that if I wanted to skip supercharging in Albuquerque before getting to Santa Fe, if I drove the speed limit, I could arrive in Santa Fe with a 14% estimated charge. And that's what I wanted to do. And usually I don't get freaked out by range anxiety unless navigation is planning on me arriving with something lower like seven to eight percent. That's when you really have to pay attention to your speed, the weather and all the rest of it. Interestingly though, while I was driving, my range was dipping down to seven percent. Because of that, I did take my foot off the accelerator, dropped about five to 10 miles per hour under the posted speed and everything was fine for the rest of the drive. After driving around the United States and Canada the last 14 months and 42,000 miles, I've discovered that with a little bit of planning and a little bit of extra time, you can pretty much go anywhere you want. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions about the route. I'd love to hear from you. I reply to everybody. Thanks for coming along for this ride through Monument Valley and have a great day.